the day before Nokia's most anticipated announcement, maybe ever, showcasing a product more thoroughly leaked than almost any other in its history. We'll talk about our hopes and fears for the new phone and the challenges of covering a device so thoroughly leaked. All that, plus a handful of Android and iOS news in the hour ahead. So let's get right down to it on episode 052 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once a week podcast from Pocket Now where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, editorial director at Pocket Now, and today I'm joined by chief news editor Stephen Leakey Fawcett Shank. Good morning there in Pennsylvania. How are you, Michael? I'm very well. It's good to have you back on the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think we're both doing better, though, than uh, senior editor Taylor Heatwave Martin. Good morning to you, you poor sweaty man. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Taylor. I'm not sweating yet. I'm not You're sweating not? yet. Really? Not the fan is doing its job? It is. I, I turned it down. I don't know if you noticed, but I turned oh, it down. Oh, you did turn it down. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I Bless was going to. I was. We, we, we were having a discussion on the other side of the uh, the, the podcast and the pre show about how we're we're like the most industrial podcast today. Taylor has a giant fan on him, and <laughs> Stephen's keyboard broke, so he had to replace it with a what a Smith Corona word processor. Is that what you're working with? There? <laughs> this has a, a manufacturing writer. date of 1988. It's 25 <laughs> years old. It's a typewriter, actually. Yeah, right, right. But it's it's legit. It's what an, an IBM mechanic keyboard you said yeah a buckling spring model m it weighs about five pounds you can really hurt somebody with this if you need to i can't uh, wait until you start googling something in the middle of the show also i wouldn't call my fan large it's the only one i have and it's got a diameter of about 10 inches oh uh, that ain't no large fan yeah. it's it's a tiny fan but it's got a punch should I have sent you some box fans in the mail? So, Taylor, you want to tell the listeners what your issue is? It's not just that you're in, in Carolina in July. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, there couldn't have been a better time for my air to go out. Um, so, yeah, I came home from a, a weekend back home with my family, and uh, my air was out on Sunday when I got home, and my apartment was upwards of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it was it was kind of toasty. It was a lot cooler outside it was upper 60s i believe outside so um i figured my unit had frozen it was running full blast when i got home and it's done it before so i figured it was frozen flipped it off left it off for two days so i suffered through monday with no air and i figured it's time to turn it on turned it on and it was blowing hot air so it was 85 inside and i turned the air conditioner on set it to 68 and it started rising to 90 degrees (laughs) <laughs> that's the so, wrong way yeah. yeah so i flipped it off told the complex that my air is not working it's blowing hot air and they sent a mate sent a maintenance man yesterday while i was away and they said they were going to try to fix it and i told them to put it at 70 if they do i came home and my apartment was pushing 90 degrees again oh, that's gotta be at, at midnight oh. <laughs> at midnight and oh, if you oh, don't oh, have oh, moving oh. air if you raise all the windows, if there's no way to pull the air into your apartment, there's nothing that raising no. windows is going to do. No, no. the apartment's no. perfectly happy just to sit there and, and cook <laughs> because the windows don't exactly go all the way up to the to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. so I slept in 90 degrees last night. And <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm talking to Taylor today on uh, on uh, Google Hangouts and. Uh, I, I realize what it takes because it's tough to get Taylor unsettled. Like you can't do it if you're an ornery troll or, you know, it's like it's tough to like get Taylor angry. But I'm talking to him this morning in Hangouts and after a night of sleeping in 90 degree weather, uh, every what like every third word was an F-bomb. <laughs> probably, probably. I was not for granted. <laughs> I know, I know. Like, not everyone is. Excuse me. Almost no one is docile in all circumstances, and I think we found what Taylor. Just don't get Taylor hot. That's the that's, heat kills me, man. Yeah. Like, if if I lived in the north, I would be pretty pretty darn happy. I but was gonna say we gotta move you to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be ecstatic. But yeah, no. What happened was the guy who came to fix my air left the heat on like he he flipped it on to heat you have to manually switch it to heat did you and specifically it, tell him that you didn't want the heat on though because this could be on you a little bit oh that's yeah. right <laughs> that's right exactly and did Fault you tell him mission. not to steal your microwave oven because if you didn't that's on you man <laughs> i would i would prefer to him for him to steal the microwave but he in, instead of leaving it on auto he flipped it over to on so it, it stays on no matter what and he turned on the heat so I came home, and it'd probably been running. I know he leaves here at 5, so it'd been running for five hours on heat. In the summer. In that, the summer. That's unbelievable. With no air to fix it when I got back. 
<laughs> well, so, I, I'm hoping uh, you know you. I'm hoping he pays you a visit later when we're when we're off the air. But listeners, please uh, endure our fa- added fan noise and uh, and our mechanical keyboard and uh, and <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But I think we're doing well. I think we're we're in a good place to talk uh, mobile tech, and I'd like to do that. And normally, Brandon Miniman uh, is the uh, the purveyor of the thought thread, but he is busy having a having a baby or helping a baby get had. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> obviously, one of the weirder sentences I've said. And, uh, Just help and have a baby get had. That's exactly. <laughs> At least you avoided the mini mini ming jokes. I did. I did. Thankfully, we've covered those exhaustively on previous uh, episodes. Uh. Uh, but, you know, so I don't want to steal his thunder with the thought thread, but we do have a bit of a thought to lead us into the show. And it's part of the reason I wanted Stephen to, to come on the show, because Stephen, as most of you will know, uh, is our chief news editor. He said he heads up the news desk, and uh, and and Stephen is always posting news all day long while we are, uh, the rest of us are opining or making videos or you know whatever, making podcasts. And as a result, Stephen has been the member of the team to uh, w- when he's when he's on duty to learn about awesome news before any of the rest of us. And the news coming out of Nokia uh, tomorrow, which we will be covering in a special edition of the Pocket Now Live, so hang out with us tomorrow. Uh, is, is probably the most anticipated Nokia news of o- almost ever. This is going to blow the 920 out of the water, probably. Uh, certainly the 900 wasn't as exciting as this, and yada yada. Um, and I wanted to talk to Stephen about what it's been like to cover that, you know, uphill yeah, push yeah. of news. I mean, because the, the 1020 or the 909 or the EOS or whatever you want to call it is huge, and I just, I'm, I'm very interested in how it's been to, to follow all of these leaks. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's been, it, would you say this is one of the most heavily leaked devices you've, you've ever covered, Stephen? More than that, I think this is a special case because we've been talking about the rumors about this phone before, you know, there's even a reason to, before we heard a model number or any specific leak. Just the idea of there being a PureView Windows phone was it started the rumor before there was any hardware to to go along with it. So we've been before we had a code name. This has been in the rumors. When yeah. we had EOS, it was in the rumors. And now, like you said, all these leaks. It's like, you know, iPhone five over here. It's 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 definitely unlike anything that we've seen from Nokia or Windows Phone in, in general. I think it's true. And I, I want to say that I feel a bit um, I feel a bit a bit foolish in retrospect. If you look back to some of our MWC coverage when you know Lumia uh, Nokia was hosting their their big event, and like the day before, Tony and I are over there, you know, just spitballing on camera. I think it was the Pocket Now Live, or it might have been the Weekly, and we're like, yeah, well, we're really hoping to see a, you know a big Nokia announcement tomorrow. And like <laughs> there had been no leaks of any sort no, indicating no. that we had anything to expect. And of course, what did we get? We got the 720 and the 520. But uh, before the, before the MWC. <laughs> you did have reasons to be thinking that because I think Nokia Russia posted a teaser video for the MWC and it had pictures of the uh, the 808 in it. Oh, is that And okay. apparently it was super, you know, unofficial. It was just some, I guess, interns or whoever without authorization. <laughs> but, ripping up know, stock footage. Nokia yeah. Russia put this out, and so it was like a day or two before. So okay. you weren't off base. Off base. Good, thank you. Because I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking this whole time, I'm like, God, were we just like, just so excited to to have maybe something to report on. No, but it's felt like that. We've been really excited to see this guy forever, and until now, there hasn't been a sense. Oh my God, it's finally about to happen. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, there's there's no doubt that this is what we're going to see tomorrow, basically. And you're right. It's this has been something we've been talking about since um, since the 808 dropped. Like n- number one, Nokia is going to put this on a Windows phone, and number two. That's going to be amazing. And tomorrow is going to be the culmination of a lot of that. But when you're covering all these leaks, Stephen, um, I, you know, give us we – don't, we don't often talk about the actual news cycle on, on the show. How do you separate the signal from the noise? There's so many leaks out there. I mean, you know, how do you, uh, how do you evaluate which ones you run with and which ones you leave alone? That's tough. And a lot of it is, especially with the early stuff, you don't know what's real and what's not. I mean, when we first saw these, uh, the images of the, you know, the 10, 20, whatever it's going to be, it's um, the, the area surrounding the lens, that little the camera bump there. Right, yes. We were all over that. Oh, this has to be a fake. This, this, it doesn't look right. Um, you know, the shadows weren't right. The engraving didn't look real. Yeah, the and engraving was uneven, right? Yeah. Sure enough, it, it looks like it's, that was legit. And 
there's oh, this. I, I, I still ahead. think it was. I still think it was faked because there's <laughs> no way. I mean, think about it logically. How do you have two shadows in different directions? So I think somebody photoshopped it, but they photoshopped something that was actually real. Okay, okay, I see. What so, you did. It was based on yeah. the legit design, but yeah. there's this. We always have to very carefully try to evaluate what are we going to jump on as fact? What are we going to start treating a lot more harshly? I mean, even right now when we're seeing legitimate leak after legitimate leak, there was this render that, like the latest one to arrive the other day, it came alongside some very real sounding uh, hardware info. It talked about you know, two gigabytes RAM. Mm-hmm. That's something I want to believe. It makes sense. So I run with that story. But at the same time, that render looks super iffy and the more i look at it the more problems i have with it but so you, yeah. you don't know what, what what you can trust what you can't and so i guess the what we end up doing is presenting a lot of the stuff to you with trying to warn you when you might want to you know treat this with the appropriate you know grain of salt or do not you know take this to the grave with you as gospel and, and leave it up to the reader to try to you know obviously we're going to be the gatekeepers and keep the really awful stuff you don't have to worry about away from you but we want to to present the full story and let you know know, what everyone's talking about even if it's not gospel from nokia take take it with a full helping of of poutine right oh my god (laughs) can we talk about poutine for a second here inability i think we we did talk about it when i came back from toronto after i'd had it for the first time i've never i have never had it cheese curds around here Trader Joe's used to, and they stopped, and I cannot find cheese curds to save my life. Oh. I, I can't. I, I've never tried it because they just don't serve. Like, no restaurant that I'm aware of serves it around here. If so. you can find the curds, you can make it yourself, but that's the sticking point for me. Yeah, see, I don't like I, I, That sounds like Back a lot in of the work country, for me. We make yeah. our own curds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've gone to dairy barns. They don't even have the curds. They just, you know, turn Come them into to cheese. Boston. We got all kinds of dairy sources up Seriously. here. Seriously. Curds up here. But yeah, but no, that's, uh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. So the Nokia poutine uh, is going to launch tomorrow. No. <laughs> So, uh, you know, and so, some of the uh, – go ahead, Taylor. Well, I, I had it up and now I don't. Um, I was going to read a tweet. <laughs> I wish of you – yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I switched my trackpad to uh, touch-to-click when I'm on the podcast because it clicks so loudly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I accidentally clicked something and now I don't have it anymore and I can't just simply go back. Well, so I'll keep searching. Yeah, keep keep searching for that. So yeah. I was going to ask Stephen, like, how much does, uh, it, it, does the um, – the source of the leak play into stuff, right? Because it, you, when I see, when I'm reading news stories, not only from Pocket Out, but from other sites, and I'll see like, leak, you know, here's this thing that might or may not be real. The first thing I do is go down to the bottom, I look at the source link, because yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, who did this come from? If this came from EvLeaks, then I can probably trust it. If this came from, you know, I, I don't know, you know, what, backwater tech, then uh, I'm probably not going to look at it. But a lot of those backwater sites, or at least the ones that you don't normally associate with being on top of leaks, have been getting a lot of really compelling stuff lately. And it's tricky. You don't know, is this coming from a legitimate source? So, you know, you sort of, you feel it out. You try and see if it fits in with the rest of what we've been hearing. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you know, eventually it gets confirmed and we get to, uh, you know, learn whether or not we should be trusting these guys. It's like Sam Bobel sort of popped up oh, relatively right. out of nowhere earlier this year with a lot of leaks about the Galaxy S4. And at first, we don't know how much faith we should be putting in this, but you get a track record going and you know, develop a reputation for yourself. Right. But again, it's also hard to find where the sources are a lot of these times. You can follow that trail of source links back pretty far, but eventually you're going to hit a brick wall. Sometimes that will be, you know, you get to like a Weibo. A lot of this stuff comes out of China, and once we get to the forums there, it sort of falls apart. <laughs> right. A lot of that's, you know, <laughs> translation issues. We can't follow exactly what's going on, but you, you follow it as far as you can, and then it's you just you have to decide for yourself, go with it or drop it. And that brings Current. in a very interesting uh, question. Uh, when you hit one of those brick walls, uh, what happens when the brick wall you hit indicates, or, or maybe doesn't, or you just speculate that it's ending at a company? It's ending at the at the company that is being leaked about. I mean, when do you know that you've got a controlled leak going on? Because that's tricky, <laughs> oh, right? Those, yeah. those, the, the Thunderbolt. Yeah. Was the HTC Thunderbolt that. a, a controlled oh, leak? It was most definitely a controlled leak because... I wasn't around for that. Like uh, <clears throat> It was like one picture or one or two pictures was sent to every single major 
site out there. <laughs> so ju- they weren't all the same pictures. They were all different pictures, but every site, like in Gadget, when I was at Phone Dog, we received some. Um, the Verge, well, The Verge wasn't around, but uh, this is my next. Tech Crunch, I mean, yeah, yeah. I think it was this is my next. I mean, it was just. All these major sites got like two or three pictures. They were watermarked with something nobody had ever heard of, and they were super high res of an actual device. Wow. They were were high res. They were really small pictures, but you could tell they were taken with a a really nice camera. So we were just kind of like, um. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, what you're saying is it was the most subtle uh, leak ever, right? Yeah, Yeah. it, it was definitely controlled. So because um, because two days after that, um, it, you at the time that was being rumored as the incredible HD, and uh, that's what everybody was referring to it as. And, oh right, yeah, yeah, and it was it was the first LTE phone, right. and um, just a couple days after that, like two days maybe, Aaron received a box in the mail from an anonymous. I think it was HTC, but he didn't know exactly who it was from. And it had all this HTC um, swag, I guess you could call it. But uh, it had all this stuff in there, stickers and, and pamphlets and all this other stuff about nothing, really. It was like clues. Um, like there was a TV, like a like a sticker of a TV, which meant HD, and, and it wasn't even HD. But uh, all these things, and it was like, we've got something amazing or incredible. Oh. Or, and it was a play on words, uh, and it was okay. just right after... After the leaks, so it was just kind of like it yeah. goes from seeming like you have this great new insider source to this is just some you know marketing guy's idea of a, a fun new campaign to try to yeah. get the capture attention. Going about it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. It, what, what I was getting to is it all kind of came at the same time, and it was just it was very obviously a controlled leak, right? And we're, we're not seeing the, the the flags like that with this one, right? Yeah. I mean, I, it, no, not to that degree, no way. No. But, but but we are we're seeing some some um, obviously like you know minor information leaked a little bit like in the in the sample pics right and the 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 shot of Joe Belfiore on his uh, what was it his Flickr oh, page that would, that had to be intentional yeah obviously you know we're gonna find that right of course like that's that 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 is and I I don't want to I'm trying to find a synonym for controlled leak so I can stop using that phrase but it's probably but, a great German word for it like three <laughs> words crammed together <laughs> there probably is Gewürztraminer but uh, the thing is like. <laughs> Uh, I think that's a wine. But the, the the thing is, like, those are compelling, and everyone has gone nuts about this image in our uh, in our various comment threads. And what uh, of Joe Bill Fiore? <laughs> yeah, his metal. Yeah, yeah. What what is he holding up? Like, this is if you haven't seen this, this is Joe Bill Fiore holding up a like a gold medal he's wearing around his neck, and he's like standing on either a dock or a boat. Uh, what's going it's a, on? It's a docked boat. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, it is a docked boat because you can see the dock in the background. I can't tell if the metal is supposed to be like a. The guy looks way too happy with his arms. So yeah, like he, a he's, he looks like he's, he looks like he's doing like a half-hearted like yeah. He looks like, no, he looks to me like he's trying to settle down a group of really ordinary people. You know, he's like everyone, that, calm down. That too. Has he got the like the the gold medal of of mediation? I don't know. Oh, there's a marathon. Okay, it's a marathon. It says a. Uh, yeah, on the ribbon around his neck, it says it's a marathon thing. Mm. So okay, so it looks it looks like he just got done running, but apparently this is a great photo. Now, is he, ev- was every- he running on water? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, the, That's the implication. <laughs> but here's the thing: everybody's going nuts about the awesome camera quality of this photo. But like, it's this photo was shot on an overcast day. It looks like I don't see anything amazing about it. But this is why I am not a photography critic. Uh, in any case, this is... It'd be def- difficult to really say much of anything about it unless it were really large, like mm-hmm. full res. Yeah, I would think this was one of the... This is the downsampled, the 5 megapixel. We're just taking the 7 pixels, cramming them into one. So it should look really good still, if that's what it's doing. But yeah, like I said, right. it, sometimes it looks, it looks like a good image, but it's hard to... We don't know where I, our I, eyes should go to tell the difference between something done by a... You know, a, a prosumer camera versus a professional camera in the high end, especially with audio stuff too. It's so super somebody look hard for a differentiate. Somebody look for a reflection here. See if he's actually using a Nokia. <laughs> actually, um, I was just gonna say, like, I was just gonna say, it's 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 uh, stories like this that really bring out the gold standard in commenters. Because let me just tell you what this thread is. Uh, someone named Troll has posted fake <laughs> picture, just like last time Nokia deceived the picture using a DSLR, and the two responses are. Idiot and no. 
<laughs> yeah, he he uh the, the troll trademark guy, he uh comments on pretty much everything ever. I think it's uh it's it's coming coming to be time to ban him. Anyway, uh what's um, the- yeah, so what I was talking about what I found, I found what I was looking for. Um it was someone uh, on Twitter. I have no idea who it was, but somebody retweeted it that I follow. Um uh, user K I I can't pronounce that. Curie T R T Curie R T I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, she says, I'd pay $1,000 for a Nokia plus win- 41 megapixel camera plus Android, put Windows Phone instead of Android, and I'd take it if it was offered, but I wouldn't pay. What? Now, I believe, yeah. I think this person is, yeah, they, they work for Droid App Storm. Ah, uh, I, yes. I don't know. So they are obviously biased here. But, but it's an interesting take nonetheless. Um, they'd still take it if it was Windows Phone, but they wouldn't pay. So, I mean, that was, it, it just struck me as really, really strange. Um, so I just felt like I needed to share that. Yeah, the craziness is, is going weird. to just multiply. But uh, we're, we're, we've got so much here, and it's, um, I, I feel like we could craft an editorial almost uh, just based on all of the stuff we've seen. And you know what? I am going to say that I was a little pleasantly surprised on a show maybe 10 episodes ago on the weekly. It was, it was quite a while ago. We, but before we got any pictures of this 1020, we got this kind of um, first-hand written account of seeing one on a bus. Do you guys remember that? No. I don't read things. No, no, no. <laughs> it, we, I read it aloud on the air. I don't remember if either of you were actually on the episode or not. I think I, think, I think I remember you reading it. Yeah, because I read it aloud because I was like, guys, here's it. Check it out. Because it, sound, it felt like I was reading like a Roswell letter yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. on there. I listen yeah. when people read things to me, but I don't read myself. Oh, well, I'm happy to read you Good Night Moon anytime you like. <laughs> oh. Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that sweet? But, but what the about thing that is, uh, it was children's crazy. story? Uh, oh, uh, oh. Go the F to Sleep. Go the F to Sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, can, we can get that Read that one to me. Read yeah. That one to me. We'll get Sam L over here. But the thing is, like, (laughs) you know, reading that account was awesome. And I was like, guys, this is probably fake, but I just got to read it because it's fun. But I think everything that 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 leak described absolutely came true from, like, the big circular opening to the uh, distinctive Lumia shape otherwise and all this stuff. So I'm going to, the next time I get one of those in my mailbox, I'm going to read it again. And it's going to be fun. Give it a second glance. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sweet. Sweet. I'm learning learning a little bit myself about how to do it. I'm learning stuff. I'm learning stuff. Uh, and we are going to to jump into another manufacturer here in a second because we can only you can only really talk so much about the uh, the 1020 and and uh, so on. Do we think it's going to be called that? By the way, because that 909. What what do you guys prefer? Do you, would you rather it be called the 1020 or the 909? I would 1020. Prefer, yeah. I would for them to get rid of number schemes. No, number schemes. Are, number schemes are great. <laughs> number screams are great too. <laughs> <laughs> number screams. Seven. Uh, no, it, it just it just makes it complicated once you get like, ten generations oh, no. in. Not that anybody yeah. ever goes ten generations, but I mean, you look at back at Blackberries. I was writing a Blackberry piece a while back, and oh, yeah. I was just going through all the old phones I had, and I had the the eighty one twenty, the eighty one thirty, the eighty three thirty, the eighty three ten, the ninety three thirty, the ninety three ten, the ninety one thirty. I remember the posting the about my you know, 7520, and people would always confuse it for the 7250. And I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, why? so that's, that's why I say that, because I've owned 30-some Blackberries, and I can't even remember all the ones I owned. And, and not even that, I can't remember a fraction of them, but just because it's, it's so ridiculous. I will concede that it has not been done well yet. But the idea yeah. of having, like, grouping the phones into families based on the numbering, all the hundred phones are the same, two hundreds or something else. Yeah, that's a good then, idea. Sure. If someone did. But eventually you run out of, <laughs> out of numbers. So, so say on this, this 920. Dewey Decimal System is still running. <laughs> <laughs> we got the 920.2. I, hate, I, hate the Dewey no, I mean, system. so what do you do? Okay, so you've got the 900 and the 920. So you've got the 925 and the 928. What happens when you go, so maybe the next one might be 930, 940, uh, you've got 950, well, 60, 70, 80, but the, you're, you're not going to use all those. They don't in use a perfect world, that. we would do this like automobiles, and we don't need a new number every or a new model every year. Yeah. We just change, it's, instead of the iPhone 5, it's the 2013 iPhone. Right. Yeah, now Which that we're seeing with the totally iPad story. But yeah. this is the exact same problem that Nokia has ran into at least one time and BlackBerry ran into. They had so many Blackberries they ran out of numbers and they were up to 99 <laughs> yeah, 99 99 50 60 something like that. 
I don't know. Yeah, so they yeah. didn't have anywhere to go. I'm like, what are you going to do? Have a phone number 10,000 and something? Like, <laughs> yeah, no. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for like the 10K or something mm-hmm. like that. No, so what did they do? They went back to just nothing. <laughs> well, now, to, but now BlackBerry Q10. is doing the, yeah, but they, the Q10 makes sense because the Q is for the QWERTY, right? The Z10 is kind of yeah. this Omega thing. and then But then they're going to restart with A. Like, I think that's pretty cool. That's If you keep the numbers to like two digits or less and put a letter in front of them, I'm generally okay with it. But I, I am upset right now by the issue we're facing by LG dropping, apparently dropping Optimus for the G2. Oh, this is right. just causing all sorts of for yeah. someone writing articles and tagging things up. Oh, we right. already have a phone called the G2. Yes, we oh, do. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. yeah. And also, it, it's complicated by the fact that LG's own brand name is just two letters stuck together, so that just sounds gross. You know, it's yeah. like the it, it's like the it, Motorola X makes sense, whereas, like, if Motorola were called, um, I don't know, MT, like the MTX, like it's like uh, actually that would sound pretty cool. Come the LG G two sounds like it should be in a George Lucas movie. LG G two does, yeah, yeah. LG G two sounds like a droid, but LG-G2. not that kind of droid. Anyway, yeah, so we're going to talk yeah. about LG a bit, but go ahead. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I, I was dying for the BlackBerry ten thousand five hundred and seventy three, but uh, <laughs> no, nobody else thought it was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in the waning days, maybe of the uh, of the three digit, you know, flagships from Nokia, I wanted to to call attention to the fact that uh, I would actually kind of prefer nine hundred nine. I think that makes sense given the eight hundred eight. But the fact that it is a lower value than nine twenty makes it extremely unlikely, in my opinion. I don't think they would do that. However, uh, I wish they would because I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, and you're already jumping into the thousands. This is your we're going yeah. on year three, and, and you're and jumping you know into like is, the, is there a better phone to jump into the thousands with than exactly. this? Exactly, absolutely not. This is the one, not. Is the one. exactly. And you know, more this, numbers, this looks more to be better. The one that deserves it. Well, this looks to be the one that deserves <laughs> it because it's what we've wanted for like a year. And then uh, the problem is solved with this for another ten years until you get to ten thousand. Yeah. Well, <laughs> once we but, yeah, get really far, but it, in the it's future. it's not a. It's it's not running Android. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Mm-hmm. So so Taylor has to go. <laughs> uh, actually actually today if it weren't pushing 90 degrees in my apartment I was gonna do a video on my thoughts on Windows Phone, and we're we're looking at probably Friday now. But uh, yeah, you can look forward to that. That's good. We will look forward to that. I will be mm-hmm. off on Friday, but I will look forward to re- watching that on Monday. But. Uh, I want to ask about this real quickly. Uh, are either now your thoughts on Windows Phone aside, Taylor, as a photographer or a, uh, a sort of one, you've got to be looking forward to the 1020, regardless of what it what OS oh, it runs. I, right? I am. I am. My jokes about Windows Phone most of the time are are nothing more than jokes. Right. And what about Stephen? I speak the truth about Windows Phone. <laughs> I, it's a great platform. It's just not for me. Yeah, right, right, right. But you're a very special case because you have, you stand apart from the rest of us in terms of smartphone adoption. I think you, uh, to your credit, kind of exist outside this constantly changing world of, of devices because you've retained the same Nexus 4 for a while now, right? It's only been like, what, six months? I yeah, guess that is a lot. It's a long time in the, yeah. <laughs> for the rest, compared yeah. to the rest of us. Yeah, I, I switch right, phones right. every, like, week if that yeah I, switch, I, I do that a couple times a week given what I, i'm reviewing yeah. and stuff i get into what i like and it's really hard for me to change it i mean i want to experiment more with like custom roms and things but once you get something that's working and you're familiar with it's it's hard to take that step to you know play around and experiment yeah. with new things ah that's what nandroid backups are for yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is true. If you're if you're still staying on Android, but let's uh, let's not get too too far away from that because I want to wrap it up on the 1020. Like I said, yeah. we're going to be covering that on the Hangout tomorrow, so please please come hang out with us, uh, Stephen. You're probably are you going to be on it? Who's going to be on it? I don't know. Me. I haven't made up my mind. Jaime, Adam, I, Dowd, and Jaime, me. Jaime, myself, and you, you are going to be on it. Good. Okay. Yeah. Stephen, you yeah, should be on it. It'll be Jaime fun. told me that that I have to do it because if if I don't, it's boring. <laughs> I was initially very confused in the earlier days of this week because I was thinking that today was the 11th, oh. and I was very concerned about this podcast <laughs> clashing up against the, yeah. uh, the launch of the you know, and It wasn't oh, until, I think, bad. last night that I realized what was really going on. I looked at the calendar for the first time in so many days, Sweet. but I don't know. I, 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 I normally do news during these big announcements, but I've been invited to join the Hangout with you guys, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah, I, I woke up this morning, and I'm like, man, I need to tell Michael that I might not be able to do the podcast tomorrow. 
And I'm like, wait, oh, yesterday wait, was Tuesday. It's happening today. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. The podcast is today. I need <laughs> yeah. to tell Michael I'm not doing the podcast today. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm gonna man up. <laughs> I think uh, breaking news from uh, the internals of the team, it looks like uh, for all of you commenters, and by all of you, I mean the, the few of you, but there, there have been more than one, who've asked us to cover the Cat um, B15, that Ew. super rugged sneaker phone. Uh, it looks like that is going to be coming to me. Now, we're not going to review it. it. I think what we're going to do is put it up against some other durable phones and just and uh, have some fun finding out how it stacks up. Do we have to return this one? Or can you do a destructive test? Oh, that would be no. We have to return this one. This is coming oh. to us from Clove, so yeah, that's great. So that's coming to me uh, tomorrow. And Taylor, uh, Taylor and I, I don't think this is not at all. This is not at all under embargo because these devices are already released. Both Taylor and I are getting Galaxy Tab review units. Yeah, um, I have an Xperia Tablet Z in the other room, and it's still in the box with a tape on it. Send it to me, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Stephen Schenk left a comment on, uh, what was it, the, the Tablet Z unboxing or the review? It was just, want. <laughs> it, it's going to get lost in the mail coming to me. Let's just put it that uh, way. <laughs> I adore uh, that tablet. And uh, Taylor, treat it right. I forgot why I sent it to you, but treat it right. Um, I think it's for a comparison video. Mm, mm-hmm. Hey, I got a full-res right. picture of Joe Belfiore. I got uh, the full rest. Taken with the mystery cam, yeah? Yeah. How well, big is it? Yeah. He's got a unibrow. <laughs> oh, no, that happens to all of us on marathons. Oh, okay. Kidding. Good. He doesn't. Um, <laughs> High res camera. It's, it's 2352 by 1568, which is. Five or three? No. Mathematics. That is four, just under four megapixels. Okay. Down sample. He took it with an HTC One. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, it, it looks pretty good, but it's hard to tell how everything looks on my computer because it it's just such a high res. Like, if you make if you blow it up big enough to actually see anything, it looks terrible because it gets pixelated. So, I'll have well, to to look at it later. We're gonna see, and uh, we're we're stoked to see about it. Let's let's move on from from Nokia to talk about the last bit of Windows Phone 8 news, which I think is actually pretty exciting and we, we do have to talk about LG uh, in the Android no. section, so let's kick it off with it. So right, right. Okay. <laughs> this is Steven's story, obviously. <laughs> uh, it, it, L, LG exec insists Windows Phone 8 device in the works. See, Moan, grumble, grumble, grumble. Right. Now, to me, <laughs> this is this is a, a, a good thing because LG has been conspicuously absent on the Windows Phone 8 front. And I think I've said this on the show before. I actually thought the Quantum had a lot going for it. They're one of their two Windows Phone 7 devices. It had one of the better keyboards ever. And I don't like landscape keyboards. And I, I had to, like, stand there in the AT&T store and decide for, like, minutes on end whether I was going to do that or get the Focus. And ultimately, the Focus uh, AMOLED screen won me over. But I liked the Quantum, and I would really like to see a Windows Phone 8 Quantum. The keyboard's not coming back. I know. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. It makes me sad, though. It is. I, I had a woman tell me that yesterday. What? She, uh, the, it's actually the, the receptionist at the office I'm moving to. Yeah. She was talking about um, wanting a, a physical keyboard again. I don't know how I always get on these conversations with people about phones. But she was <laughs> like, yeah, I really wish I could just get my old keyboard back. And I was like, gone are the days of a physical QWERTY. Yeah. So, but uh, they're not like, I mean, they're, they're still very decidedly on their way up. You can still find them. I mean, one of my yeah. other friends just got a Droid 4 for that very reason. Like, she was like, yeah, I need oh, a keyboard. <laughs> I just okay. I want to buy a new phone, and I want to never get an update for it right out of the box. <laughs> what do you recommend? <laughs> but it's, it's funny. Like, even after years and years and years of this, like, customers, uh, not average consumers, but friends of, of mine who are, um, tend to be tech light, you know, they don't even know what an update is. And, you know, they don't care as long as yeah. they can text mm-hmm. and Google and, and get map directions. They're fine. One thing I've always believed is you should never buy anything on the promise that it's going to be updated. No, of course not. No, You should never, suicide. ever go into yeah. something. And that's one, one problem I had with the HTC One, with the shipping with 4.1 instead of 4.2. Um, right, right. But, but, I mean, the difference between those two is very small anyway. But, nonetheless, it's... Uh, it's something everyone should should agree with. You should never buy anything on the promise that it's going to be updated. Oh, Even if you know it's going to be updated. Even if the company says, we're going to update this, don't 
do it. Well, thankfully, you should be able to Wait. avoid a lot of those problems with this theoretical LG Windows Phone because Windows Phone has a pretty good track record of. Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 what have we waited for in, in the Windows Phone world? And uh... first update was a train wreck. Oh, what? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. From, I mean, I mean from... Windows Phone 8. Sorry. 7 is dead. I, I'm not talking about 7 and 7.8. <laughs> We're not going to count stuff. the stuff with, that, that, that you're talking about. No, Windows Phone 8 seen its share of hiccups with the updates coming down. Has it? Yeah, I remember earlier this year, what was the, um, the one in February or something? There were a bunch of staggered problems where carriers were oh, is starting carrier? to release it and holding back, and you never knew who was getting it. I mean, you can always bypass it. It's sure. a nice thing. Right, and, but, and the carriers are always going to be that, that problem, and who knows when that will get fixed. But that's, yeah. not, that's not the OEM's fault. You know, I don't think that— Unless it, you're Apple— to my yeah right, but to my yeah. recollection, we don't have. I, I don't. Has Nokia screwed up a release? Has HTC held back on a on an update? I mean, or has it has not enough time passed? Because we're still waiting on this major one that everyone calls something different. Nokia calls it calls it their Amber update, which is going to bundle in. What is it? GRE two. Yeah, Amber's on top of GDR two. GDR two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 carriers talk, Windows Phone, update, GDR2 arrival. Anyway, so who knows? I don't know. I don't care. I don't want to talk about updates. What do you think about about the actual hardware that's going to come out of this? Because we've seen LG shift uh, from an older idea of, of this, like, squared-off corner to some of the leaks we'll talk about in a second of the Optimus 2, which looks to be much more Nexus 4-like. Will we see a rounded Windows Phone out of LG, like an all-glass jobby? What do we think? I think it's you're going to look here. exactly it's, – it's probably going to look exactly like the Ativas. Well, I don't think it's actually going to come out. <laughs> you don't think it's going to land? Do you think it's it's not legit? I mean, this comes to us from, what, light reading India. Well, I believe that an LG exec has said that development's going on internally, and I'm sure it probably is. I don't think LG is going to release the phone, though. Really? I have. I mean, we've they've been talking about working on a Windows Phone 8 device forever now. I'm feeling this is a project that's long been you know, designated to the bottom of the importance scale there. It's probably a couple of guys still... You know, working away on it, hoping that LG is going to commit to it, but I really can't see them doing it unless the uh, well, unless this Nokia is a huge success and brings a whole new share of the market to to Windows Phone. I don't think it's in LG's interest to release another Windows Phone handset. So it may not be, but think about what about the pressure that Microsoft might exert on them? Because if you're Microsoft, what do you have as far as Windows goes? You've got you've got you know Samsung making Windows phones that everyone's kind of ignoring. You've got L, uh, HTC making Windows phones that were cool for like two weeks. And then now they're not as cool anymore. And then you've got basically Nokia, which is the the superstar. And then Huawei, if you want to count count Huawei for different markets. So Was would it be you, a Sin W8? Yeah. So wouldn't you oh. want to be pushing oh. LG to 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 recontribute, especially uh, since they already have Windows Phone experience? I'd be pushing um, Samsung to contribute more, but yeah, I don't Samsung. think LG is going to bring anyone to the platform. I agree, but but li- listen about. I don't think they. Can, I think there's a certain amount of pressure Microsoft can exert on Samsung, because Samsung's huge, right? They're, yeah. they're the world's number one handset vendor. And I'm not saying LG is small, but I'm saying I think that they can impart more force on LG than they could on well, Samsung. It's kind of like a dual package. You you in, you encourage Samsung to do it, and LG is probably going to do it as well. Well, no question as, about that. Yeah. As, as sad as that sounds, so I say pressure Samsung and 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 get the the. The freebie. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching. Doesn't necessarily think on its own much anymore. They kind of wait for Samsung to do something, and then they say, you know, we'll do it too. Mm. I mean, well, if you don't believe me on that, look at the LG Optimus G Pro. Well, we're going to look at that in a second. What were you going to say, yeah. uh, Stephen? I know, I'm sure, like a lot of us, I've been watching a lot of Arrested Development uh, with the Netflix coming out last month, and say that that one's a freebie. I've got to, I've so, so, so got to watch that show because everyone around me has been watching it. Wait, wait, wait. You've never watched it? No. I've, I've never watched it. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? See, Stephen, now you know how I feel whenever I'm on the podcast and I bring up a Star Trek joke and everyone, <laughs> it's just dead air. And then one commenter four Trek hours later is like, I got it. I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to Android if we can because yeah. we have uh, burned through Windows Phone and there's going to be a whole lot more Windows to talk about tomorrow. Android. We're talking leaks still. This is the leak show. And we have seen some leaks out of Motorola, which we talked about last week with their X phone. But we've seen leaks of, to me, a more interesting device, the Motorola Droid Ultra. Stephen, once again, bringing us this. Interesting? Yes. 
Well, in well, what right. way? All right. So what is interesting about this to me is not the necessarily the hardware itself, which looks like a basically an updated um, Droid Razor. Yeah. But it is what it carries along with it in its wake, which are the leaks about the Droid Ultra Max. Yeah, anything with Max tagged on the back of it is exactly. uh, amazing. And principally because I read a headline yesterday. I think it was last night. It wasn't one of ours, and I don't remember who it was from. But the headline was, uh, Motorola Droid Ultra Max promises, quote, 48 hours of worry-free battery life. And I guess that was coming. Ooh. That quote was coming from Motorola. I don't, I'm sorry I don't know where that came from. I was, like, half asleep. But that's exciting to me. Now, we have some problems with, these, with this leak, though, right, Stephen? We have some off-center uh, buttons or something like that? I don't know what to think about that. Someone pointed it out in the comments, and sure enough, it's, it's weird. It's just off-center, and the, uh, the next render that leaked was the exact same way. So it's consistent, at least. We're talking the home back and menu keys at the bottom. They're, like, bumped over, like, what, four or five pixels to the left, right? It just looks just weird enough to be... It's, it's, Why, it's not but, something you'd ever see from an official, officially made render. Yeah. Um, why why would Motorola be going back to hardware buttons? Yeah, there's that too. I've heard um, people talking about how because these are droids are going to be on Verizon, maybe it was the carrier trying to push them to do this, but it's weird, yeah. It is weird because uh, on the X, refresh my memory, I guess, the X has uh, software buttons we're, we're seeing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the X does, I believe, and the Droid Razor M, Razor Max Definitely. HD, all the, Razor all them HD did. Yeah. have, have yeah. on screen. Yeah, I know those, but... Um, but I've got um, Motorola hardware. Let's look through some of these leaks and see what we got. Yeah, so the, it, while we're talking about stuff like design elements, I mean, it is, it is also interesting that the Droid, even though it's not called the Razor anymore, but the, the Razor design aesthetic mm -hmm. is living on. In it's these the Razor HD devices. 2 is what these are. Yeah, well, exactly. And that's great. Taylor, uh, have you, can you mute for a second? Yeah, that's a little better. Um, it's, it's, it's funny because, like, the auto, the auto volume will, like, gradually boost the gain if somebody hasn't said something in a while, and all of a sudden there's a jet engine in my ear. Lovely. Uh, lovely. Yeah. But so I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm surprised and excited to see that these um, that the razor aesthetic has lived on because I was worried it was going to just completely go by the wayside. And I think, tell me if you know, tell me if you disagree. I think this is entirely a Verizon thing. I think they want their hardcore, you know, militant droid heavy lifting phones, and they're not maybe as enthused about this uh, kind of puffy Riverstone X design. Yeah, I think Verizon's had a lot of success with the the various Razer and Razer Maxes <clears throat> over the past uh, two years, and I, I mean, we've seen signs of Motorola trying to reinvent itself. The new logo, mm -hmm. there was we don't know if it's a leak or just you know a design suggestion, but there was that whole idea of a new campaign with you know goodbye Moto and then it's reborn. So I can see it wanting to distance itself from older brands. So maybe it didn't want to make another uh, razor this year, and this is just its way of continuing on with the same the same things that have worked for Verizon in the past, but just making it a little 2013, giving mm -hmm. something fresh, if not much. But yeah, the design's still there. And I really like that. Do you see the little stripe of uh, Kevlar up on the bottom, on the front? Uh, oh, yes, yes. It's so not just on the back. It's right. Nice. They've brought the Kevlar kind of finish right around to the front. And, and even though there's no chin on the device, it looks like it is just a little suggestion of that pattern on the bottom. That is nice. I didn't know I that. guess I love the feel of it. It's very, it's, it's, it's one of the more premium materials that we've seen in in It really wrestling. is. It's, it's like what I always imagined soft touch would graduate into. Remember when soft touch was new? Like it was like 2005, I feel like, was the first time I touched any kind of soft touch paint job. And I'm like, this is way better than anything glossy or, you know, lame. And uh, I was like, where's this going to go? And Kevlar has the soft feel of that paint, but with a, um, you can feel that. I love, I like that you can feel the texture of the weave patterns. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's one of the nice things about, uh, I enjoyed about reviewing the Atrix HD for AT&T was that nice back plate. That was about the only thing I enjoyed. Taylor, did you find what you were looking for? Um, I wasn't looking for anything. What are you talking about? I thought you'd know. <laughs> you just <laughs> shut him up. <laughs> yeah, you told me to shut up. No, uh, I didn't actually like the, the feel of the Atrix HD, but, but I, I did of the Max. Um, so I don't know. It's yeah, see that weird. Well, I liked I liked the Max. I continue to like the Max, but I never got hands-on time with it. Um, I couldn't deal with the display. 
Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't care about that pen tile. But let's talk about Ultra Pixels for a second, can we? Because we were talking Motorola already. We got the Motorola X up. I will freely admit that I was not aware that there were um, that there was an alternate subpixel arrangement in a camera. But that looks like what's rumored. We got a leak out of uh, showing some more Motorola X hardware, which you know, whatever. It's the Moto X. It's it looks interesting, whatever, or it doesn't. But the camera rumors are interesting, right? What's the story on this, Stephen? The clear pixel. Yeah, um, this leaked from it was a guy from one of the various smartphone sites. I forget which one. He, I think Google plussed out uh, this announcement that it was the Moto X would have this clear pixel camera. He didn't give many details, and then all oh. these people are... Taylor Wimberly. Taylor, Taylor Wimberly, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he used and, to be uh, with uh, Android and me. They sold it. Right. So he makes this uh, this leak, and then everyone's responding to it, trying to get more details. And he, he gives this line, it's going to... Uh, you know, it's going to put an end to blurry pictures or dark shots or something. And then a little while later, one of the commenters found that same line appearing in a advertising or promotional copy from a couple of years back where Kodak announced its own clear pixel thing. It used the exact same phrasing that he used here. So we're not sure if this is a a feature that Kodak developed and now Motorola is licensing, or I'm kind of wondering if maybe his story is kind of being developed backwards, and he started with a clear pixel name and just kind of dredged that up. So it's unclear. But if that is the case, and this is the Kodak stuff we're talking about, then it takes the uh, the normal Bayer filter pattern, which is a sub-pixel arrangement that uses uh, you know, twice as many green pixels as red and blue, and it's kind of a checkerboard pattern, and it throws in these extra clear pixels. So they're not going to register any color sensitivity, but because they're clear, they're going to let a lot more light in. And so they can have a uh, more, they can deliver a more accurate brightness, uh, a sense of brightness to the sensor without so much digital noise because we're, you know, pumping the gain up so high. Right. So it, it could end up looking, and uh, there was a sample that someone found, and it does look better. You still get a little bit of noise. And even though we're losing color resolution, the eye doesn't really notice it so much. Yeah, considering that this uh, sample image is from 2007, it looks like. This is not bad. It, it kind of almost looks like what might have happened if uh, if a, a Lumia device had come out back then, where it's like, here's this uh, kind of shady, grainy, dark picture, and, oh, we've enhanced it. And you, you, you're right, you can still see noise in the second shot, but mm -hmm. the fact that this is from six years ago is actually pretty impressive. So I did not, I was not aware of the ties between um, this six-year-old development and uh, this possible new clear pixel camera on the X, but it'll be very, very interesting to see whether this pans out. I love that everyone is focusing on cameras now. I love that the yeah, advancements yeah. in optics are what's driving this stuff because... Well, I mean, God, what, what else are they going to do? What else are they going to do? We've, we've improved displays beyond belief already. Right. Um, yeah, processors are... are also, processors are too improved. good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got um, 1.9 gigahertz quad core, and we haven't even seen an eight, uh, Snapdragon 800 yet. We're up to 2.3. Uh, yeah, 2.3 on the 800, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just we we don't need much more than that. We're looking at moving up to three gigs of RAM soon. Um, the only two things that are really left that need to be greatly improved are battery life and camera Man. and software. <laughs> Well, well, software is an, mm. an ongoing thing. <laughs> it's something that's not hardware dependent. So, well, not always hardware dependent. Right. So, it's it's more rapidly updated than well, not even. Not, and, I take that back. Take batteries that back. a hard thing to improve. I mean, developing. I mean, we're talking not just engineering, like with lenses and fabrication issues. We're talking a lot of hard science into finding, you know, the right chemicals that are going to be able to store, you know, more charge per. You know, cubic millimeter, and it's a lot easier, I think, and maybe more visibly impressive to develop, to work on increasing camera technology than working on battery life, and that's you know sort of unfortunate, but at least we're getting yeah. really good cameras out of it. Yeah, and um, I mean, Motorola has something that nobody else is really doing, and Samsung is, but really only in their larger phones, and that's gigantic batteries in phones that are still relatively slim. Yeah. Um, so the fact that they can do that, I think they really have something that they could run with here. It, if they throw the two of them together, have a great display, they, they throw together a true flagship phone, 
like this Ultra Max, maybe. Yeah, um, but you know, it, I, I, I. But get, it's limited. It's always going to be limited because I, it's a, a, a specific device to why? a specific because it's carrier. Because it's for Verizon. Yeah, but the, you know, they released yeah. the Max uh, overseas as well, and this is why I like having Tony on the show sometimes to provide this context, this balance for Motorola. Because <laughs> anytime we talk Motorola, there's just like ten minutes of silence from Romania, and I'm like, Tony, what do you think? He's like, I, I don't care about Motorola. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nobody over here cares about Motorola, and it's true. Like, they're I think Motorola's European. Uh, presence has been flagging or, or just kind of non-existent for a long time and um it's and interesting because they're, they're gonna we have some speculation that they might be targeting the x at some european countries or something like the x or something like the x yeah but so that's not exciting in and of itself but as a part of a larger strategy maybe it is but my thing is you know guys you're absolutely right this is so exciting this motorola Ultra Max and the Razer Max was exciting, and the Razer Max HD was exciting, but they may have sold very well for Verizon. I just really never see them out on the street, and I, I ultimately some, didn't buy one. Do my you? neighbor has one. Yeah, I have seen. I, yeah, I see them sometimes, well, but I, I live in a very uh, different part of the country, I guess. See, um, I, I wanted it. I wanted a Razer Max really, really badly, but I what what did I not want to put up with? I think it was Verizon. I didn't want to put up with. Well, I have Verizon, and the only thing I didn't want to put up with, with was the pentile display because that yeah, just kills I me. Never, I never. Um, I looked at that. And, and, and that I don't fine. think that Made in USA, this big new campaign for Motorola, is really going to help their international presence. Uh, so. uh, yeah, true. But you know what? The, it, I, I think that's a good risk to take because no one else is really doing it except Apple is kind of half-heartedly doing it. Uh, Google. With, it's just trying to. Well, but Google is Motorola. Motorola. I mean, they are I mean, kind of the same company. Yeah. It killed the Nexus Q, though, because it was so expensive. Okay. It killed the Nexus Q because the Nexus, well, the Nexus Q, Q didn't, didn't have any support. amplifier in it. The, the Nexus, Nexus Q, Q did not need an amplifier. The Nexus Q was a redheaded stepchild from the, from the day it came out. But I, I loved it. I love mine. I know. We, everyone knows. Not, you have one? I yeah, have one, but God, it's he not. He talks about it on every oh. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have one. I didn't pay for it. Nobody paid for it. Oh, yeah. I you wish I, I knew to, that at the time. I would have ordered one. We need to get together yeah, with a, uh, you know, Stephen, bring bring a Newton. I'm going to bring my pre-3 over, and we'll get Taylor's Nexus Q, and we'll just have a, a big pity party for ourselves. It'll be fun. <laughs> or maybe maybe I should just take my uh, thermostat off the wall since it's broken and and also a red-headed <laughs> stepchild. And, uh, there you go. Yeah, oh, We'll have a podcast about that, too. That's right. We'll, we'll pour a little out. Or my <laughs> Ouya. I've got so many products that just kind of failed, like flopped. This is no good for the podcast, but when we get the uh, the hangouts going again, mm-hmm. I found going through some boxes. I found a a toy walkie-talkie that looks just like one of those old like 1988 Motorola brick cell phones, oh, the giant yes, ones. Yes, yes, this is nice. my favorite prop. Uh, yeah, I love those. Um, Taylor, the guy who shared the the clear pixel camera stuff, said uh, Moto X will feature an always on system thanks to its proprietary dedicated natural language processor with audio sensors, noise estimators, noise cancellation, and speech speech recognition technology. I'm oh. sure this is always listening mode can be turned off, but how does you know how does that affect privacy? But so it would be always listening, so you could see that's maybe that's what I've been dreaming about for a long time. So you don't but, have to be in stupid S voice, or you don't have to be in Google now. You just, yeah, just talk to the phone. I love like, that like, idea. Like, like Wait, Google is he, is he Glass, talking, just say "Okay, Google" and search. Right. Is he talking about when the phone's on, or like the Snapdragon 800 when it's off and you can talk to it? It might be the the that because that I, I mean. I guess problems has, with that and the hardware. What's, what's this, an S4 that the Moto X is going to have? That doesn't have that feature. So maybe it is just when it's on he's talking about. Yeah, I think it's just when it's on. I don't think it's going to be like I, – I, I think that would be a really tough thing to sell to to the public. <laughs> you know, with like – Your even, phone's always listening your phone's to you. off, it's always listening. Isn't that it's convenient? Like, uh, and people are like, Xbox no. One, and it's – NSA Connect. Yeah. <laughs> the, the new NSA Moto Prism. Your life. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's 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 just kind of plow through here. I uh, I got the rundown links disorganized, but let's return to LG before we leave uh, oh, Android wait, behind. Or, um, before we get away from Motorola, any yeah. guesses about what we're going to hear about today or tomorrow? All right, tomorrow. I'm still thinking it's, it's the 11th. <laughs> it's the 10th and the 11th. The event is the 10th and the 11th. Right. They said it's, gonna, oh, it's not going to be the event, Moto right? X, but it's going to be something that they're and sharing. And it's Moto-related. Yeah. Uh, Motorola's on-display event. Is that what's going on? It's a Google developer event that's open to, like, 50 press. Yeah. And that's it. And it's private 
it's a private event. Yeah, there's um, no July 11th event for Motorola and no Moto X announcement. No, it's a Google uh, event. Yeah, Google. No, it's a Google, Google event. event. Google event that's supposed to be Google. Motorola centric. Uh, so some oh, think that so it's a Motorola that, event. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, Nobody does. The, the rumors were saying that it might be the Moto X, and then they said, no, they're not going to be the Moto X, and then they were saying it might be Android 4.3, but that's not Motorola-centric, so who knows what it is. Uh, they're going to launch a Bluetooth speaker phone. I don't know. Yeah, what, what time is this thing? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time this podcast comes out, we, we, will, have, uh, we will have learned, we and we will have reported on it. Yeah. Hopefully. So, I don't know. Yeah. Do, 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 any, do we want to talk about that at all anymore? I mean, we can. I can look it up again if you would I like. I just me. wondered if anyone had any guesses of what was going on. It's it's so low profile that I actually didn't even <laughs> know about it. I, I heard it, about it, it last night. It dropped on Friday. That might be why you don't know. It dropped on Friday? What, last like, Friday? You, yeah, news of it dropped on Friday. Oh. Well, I was around on Friday, wasn't I? Oh, we no. were doing the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week was the weird week. Anyway. Google's 11th July press event invite hints at Moto X unveiling. So this is an old. This is old. Yeah. If you find anything interesting about it, let me know because I just want to talk about the fact that we are going to be there on August 7th for LG's event in New York City. I'll be able to make this one, actually. I don't have to not go. So hooray. And uh, the LG invite or the teaser for the event says, great to have you. And the G and the 2 are comically oversized. So this is very obviously the G2 launch event. And I wanted to take, take your temperature on this, guys, because I, am, I didn't think I was going to be too excited for the LG Optimus G2. We just gave away an Optimus G. It is on its way to Julian in Australia for, as a result of our giveaway last week. Uh, and we all, I think a lot of us really liked the G here at Pocket Now. I know I certainly did. It was responsive and, and the hardware was very pretty. But I wouldn't have been very excited for the G2 if it weren't for these leaks showing this cool, stretched Nexus 4-esque design. So I'm pretty jazzed about it, and I like the volume rocker on the back. What do you, what do you do think, Stephen? Stephen's not, Steven? like not the excited. the volume rocker on the back. You don't. <laughs> I know, and we know Taylor's opinion on this because you wrote an editorial about it, so you can chime in in a second. Why don't you like the volume rocker on the back? It doesn't work for how I hold the phone when I'm watching videos or something. I hold it by the edge, and I like to be able to fiddle with the volume control. Oh, so you're a, you just like to have it thumb accessible, and you don't want to reach a finger around back I've there. got this whole thing. i got my pinky propped underneath to hold the phone up, fingers wrapped around the edge. They're, they're positioned to hold it <laughs> at the same time, work the volume if I need to. Uh, if yeah. they're on back, I'm going to be you know, afraid I'm going to drop it or something. But on a phone um, call? It's, it's nice on a phone call, though. Oh. I don't make phone calls on my smartphone. <laughs> yeah. uh, not many of us do. But, t- but Taylor, you like the idea, yeah? Well, I was saying basically exactly what Stephen was saying. It's a brilliant idea for those who talk on the phone a lot because it's, it's essentially where your index finger rests. It just rests there on the back of the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're using it for anything else, it kind of poses a problem unless the buttons are really easy to press or maybe they're capacitive. But then you might accidentally change the volume and you've got a whole it's kind of a we need to see it first like have it in our hands and figure out how it works more than than guess at it while we're talking about button placement i have a theory about those uh the droid ultra off center buttons yeah what if it's optimized for right-handed users because I'm left-handed wait, and screw those guys <laughs> everyone in my immediate family is left-handed except me it odds are Million to one. Don't you wow. feel special? Yeah. <laughs> They're all just a bunch of sinister people. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but what if it's slightly over to the side because most people are right handed and you know when you're holding the phone in your right hand, your thumb I mean the center is not the at least uh, the phone, you know, four point five, five inches in size, your thumb's not gonna go to the center by default. It's gonna be a little off to the left, right? No, see, I don't know. I, w- I would move the buttons to the right in that case, because if I'm right-handed really? and you're using the phone one-handed, yeah, I don't want to be stretching my thumb all the way over to the left side of the mm-hmm. device. And I certainly don't want to be doing that more than I would if they were center. This is the yeah, problem and with I ergonomics. Don't, yeah. I don't want to believe that Motorola would be completely ignoring the fact <laughs> that there are a lot of left-handed people in the world. <laughs> this, this is why I have to make champion. This is a very likely theory. But I'm, You know what they are, guys? They are totally, this is the secret. They're totally rearrangeable buttons. You tap and hold on them, and you can drag them anywhere <laughs> on the device. Ooh, you can move them um, around to the side if you want. That would be Motorola, cool as hell. Motorola, first to optimize a phone for use with feet. 
<laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. This I think show, somebody yeah. just kind of, <laughs> this show's taking a dive. <laughs> um, I think someone had just screwed up in Photoshop. So, yeah. as, as people okay. normally do with these renders. <laughs> There's like some, an some iPhone running in the marketing yeah, department, the... and it's like, man, this is going to keep them busy for two weeks <laughs> talking about sure. nothing. What are they? It's like one of those Google little itty bitty hints that Google drops. Yeah, and and they wait to see if anybody actually notices. And three weeks after they drop it, people are like, "Oh my god!" It was because they stared thing. at a press event invite like for way too long. You know? Can I tell you leak in the Star Trek Into Darkness screenshot? Like uh, when I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, uh, right, where they, they hid a piece of crucial information about the film in the same frame as the b- half-naked Alice Eve, that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it nobody saw post. it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. pretty tricky. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm sucky at at, the, at at finding those leaks, by the way, because uh, this LG one that I've been talking about, the G2 event, like, when we ran this headline, like, LG all but confirms G2 for August 7th event, I didn't really look at the image all that closely, but I'm like, wow, that's a really bold headline. How did they do that? I don't know. It's just black velvet. What's that? Do? And then I was like, oh, G2, great to have. Yeah, okay. it's, got a, it's got a giant G and a giant two on it that's pretty <laughs> clever <laughs> it's it's and, the, uh... and i want to punch anybody who ever uses the number two in the place of to yeah. and i understand what they're doing here uh, but that is no excuse <laughs> prince would kick your ass i'm that saying he's a small so guy true. but he's Dude, he fierce what were you gonna say steven oh uh, i don't remember what we were talking about 10 seconds ago oh <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's come quite the past. Thought the train. Past. Um, mm-hmm. The consensus on the speculation, I suppose, for this event that's happening tomorrow. So the press event is happening tomorrow. The developer event is happening today and tomorrow. But mm-hmm. the press event tomorrow, the speculation is that there will be the new Nexus 7, which is oh. likely because it's been rumored to be launching in July, and it just passed through the FCC last <laughs> month. Yeah. So, maybe. I, know. It's it's weird I don't know. Thing to do in but, private, though. Well, in private, yes. And two, why would Motorola be making a Nexus 7? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, there's a lot that's kind of, none of it really matches up or you makes know, the, sense. The Zoom was a great tablet, bro. Yeah, I had one. I had two. <laughs> what about I the, what is it, the Cyborg or whatever? The, the Cyborg, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way to go, Verizon. So, Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's g- close it out uh, with iOS before we hit listener mail. Uh, because I, I kind of wanted to talk about this earlier. I wanted to segue into this with their camera talk. But this is something that is exciting to me. And the reason I put it in the rundown is because I wanted to get your opinion on it. Uh, because this is oh. a podcast where we talk about things. And uh, no. Taylor, Taylor's going to say no. Thank you. I appreciate you Call fulfilling me, me. Troll. <laughs> Captain Troll. Captain Troll TM. Hey, Whoa. could Apple give the iPhone 5S a slow mo camera mode? Uh, nope. This news story from shut up, Taylor. <laughs> this news story from uh, Stephen Shank, and um, there's I guess this is based on code in the iOS 7 beta that uh, there's a, a mogul camera mode that would allow for shooting video with a frame rate as high as 120 frames per second. And normally, uh, cameras on smartphones are shooting at 30 fps. And then more recently, uh, companies like HTC and Samsung have been throwing in this kind of uh, slow mo mode where it'll it'll double that frame rate. It'll shoot at 60 fps, and when you play it back at 30 fps, it's really cool. Uh, rather than just slowing down 30 fps footage, which gets kind of jagged. Samsung was doing something cool with this at the Galaxy Note 2 launch event for the U.S., where they had a bunch of ping pong tables set up. Taylor, you and I were at that event together. I was not there. Yes, you were there. Oh yeah, I was. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, jerk. Uh, you were there, and um, I was there working and didn't see you, but like two yeah. seconds at the time. You no, you weren't working. You were hanging out with the rest of us because there was nothing else to report on except the stupid Verizon branding on the button. <laughs> so you were hanging around just wasting time with the rest of us. And Mark, that's when Marquez, Marquez, and I had the uh, ping pong game. Yeah, I disappeared for like an hour and a half because I was disappear. actually trying. Yeah, I was working. Actually, I was working too. I was working in that pop-up YouTube studio for a minute. And I was like, hey guys, this is a Galaxy Note 2. Really don't have anything new to show you, but I'm in a cool studio. Thank you, yeah. Samsung. I had to shoot hands-on videos of devices that looked exactly the same and <laughs> yeah. show what was different. So, Oh, yeah. Hard times. <laughs> and, and then we, and then we went hands-on because the Verizon one had a Verizon button on it. Yep. Oh. And then we went to go see uh, uh, Kanye. 
Oh, that was awful too. But I did down a lot of uh, <laughs> doers that take. I did too. I I met uh, D- David uh, Gamboa that that night. Uh, Instagram personality David, and we had a, we had a wonderful time. And now we now we friends. But anyway, listen, we were playing ping pong. Okay, <laughs> we were playing ping pong, and Samsung had a Galaxy Note two set up to record in slow mo and kind of stream the feed to a TV, and you could see yourself playing ping pong uh, in in relatively slow speed and pretty good quality for how dark the room was. So I like slow motion video, and I think it's um, a pretty cool thing for manufacturers to be putting in, but what, uh, it, it makes sense that Apple would try and play to this thing. Uh, remember when I dropped the Galaxy S4 Active in the bucket of water at the end of the Galaxy S4 Active review? You, you think I that? actually watch reviews? <laughs> no, you're a jerk bag. <laughs> we watched it. We watched it. Thank you. I thank watched, thank I you, Stephen, for pandering. Uh, I watched most of it. I dropped, this, I dropped this phone in a bowl of water, and I shot it with an HTC One. I shot most of the review of my regular camera, but I shot this shot with my HTC One at, whatever, 60 FPS. And it's just so nice and silky the, to, to watch this, this slow motion action. And, of course, if you're not doing phone reviews, you can take a video of your kid on a swing or you can take a video of a boat going through the water or something, you know, whatever. But I, I, why don't you think this is a possibility, Taylor, or are you just being a troll? Oh, I'm just, I'm just trolling. <laughs> <laughs> so do, so you think it's about yeah, it. <laughs> I think it's likely. I think it's something that the iPhone has not historically had, and I think that they're going to go for it. it I'm it just not very... sure that the processor that they're using is going to be able to support maybe 1080p at 120 frames per second because that's ridiculous. Nobody's, it, they, oh. Well, they all downsample the resolution when exactly. they shoot at higher frames. So it's you know 720p if you're lucky. You, know, like you need a Go, so, GoPro Hero 3 to shoot at full res and, yeah. and high frame so, rate. So basically what you'd have to do is, is dumb this down to like Instagram status for, for super slow motion. Yeah, but well, you wouldn't have to go that low. You could do it in. They, I have a feeling they could do it in 720p at 60 fps. But this is rumored up to 120 fps. I don't think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at 120, oh, well, at 120 you'd, be, you'd have to be at yeah, like 640 by 480. Or look something. at this XGA video I shot, guys. <laughs> yeah. it's super slow motion. Get right. out your magnifying glasses. Right. right. I don't know. Apple's got its custom chips for it. Maybe it has something up its sleeve that'll be able to handle all these pixels. Yeah. And it's well, gonna while, have it's, a... while it's handling iOS 7, too. Blah. Well, you know, <laughs> ne- neon, neon colors don't need all that much. Technical processing. issues aside, I think the idea rings very true to something that Apple would do. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't you oh, just yeah, see yeah. the commercial? Like, I was like, yeah. there's so much that happens inside a second. Ping. Yeah. <laughs> that was a water drop. Or... And right. then, yeah, yeah. And, and, and dots floating around all over the place. Yeah. Random dots. There's so much we miss in our day to day lives. Don't Nobody you wish you could capture eight. that? Playing, playing, somebody in the background playing a one string guitar. Bing. We know in real life the only thing that this is actually going to be used for is like slow motion video of your best friend eating like a cheeseburger or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, let's like all. A dog when, shaking his head real fast. Yeah. Oh, of course. It, when this drops, let's all like take photos of um, of pouring milk into cereal really slowly, like it's a <laughs> Kellogg's commercial, you know. At high we, speed. We, we, are we moving forward with this terrible quality? Uh, we are moving <laughs> forward to answer one piece of listener mail, and then we're gonna we're gonna call it a show. Hey, Pocket Now team, says Alex Ong, with the present of the great low-light performance phones, do you guys think flashlights still serve their purpose to brighten up the environment or just be there to replace the traditional torchlight? So I had to read this a couple times to, to, right, to get the meaning. This is, um, I, think we had, I think we ran into a translation like, issue. I think Alex is asking, considering the fact that so many phones now have, or, excuse me, not so many, that a few phones now have really great low-light performance, does the camera flash still serve its purpose, its primary purpose, as a camera flash, or is it going to be relegated to like flashlight status for like finding stuff uh, in your dark basement? Uh, you know what I mean? And I think it's a really good question because I never use the flash on my Lumia or my HTC never. One because mm. I, I hate flash the way down. flashes flash it looks make awful. the cameras yeah make photos look unless you're really good at composing unless you've got a um, a large distant object in the background at dusk and you want to illuminate the foreground you want to illuminate a subject in the foreground with a with a quick xenon flash blast i get that yeah. but otherwise yeah, but, i never but use but a it. little pin prick led isn't going to do it right but a xenon flash will like on a, on a lumia 928 or something like that but you're right the dual led spot is not going to do that terribly well 
So, yeah, I I think it's, I don't know, I don't think there's really an answer to this question. I think manufacturers are still going to ship flashes on all their phones and people are still going to use them for as many purposes as they they can. But to me, this just recalled all of the the wonder of the days of... uh, (laughs) Of not being able to control your flash. Do you guys remember when you couldn't light up your spotlight on your phone manually? Like, in order to use it as a flashlight, you had to start rolling a video with the spotlight on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I don't, you don't I remember? I a little app or something. Oh, no. There wasn't. like there, not, it, not in the days of BlackBerry. Or in the uh. days of, uh, of dumb phones, either. Like, there was, no, there was never any Torch app. You just had to, like, start rolling a video with your dumb phone. and it was, I didn't even have a camera on my dumb phone. <laughs> and it, it only worked for about, like, 30 seconds. Right. Because either, one, the video was limited to 30 <laughs> seconds. Or, two, you only had enough memory in the phone for 30 seconds. Exactly. Of video. Exactly. <laughs> so you have still... to use the, the camera... For like for like thirty seconds, stop it, delete the video, and start again. <laughs> I still have so many old uh, uh, pictures or videos on my hard drive of like five years ago or seven years ago, with just like a dark hallway kind of going by in the fringes of the camera's vision because I'm using the thing as a uh, as a flashlight. <laughs> but, but yeah, so and I remember, guys, when the uh, when the app store opened up and the I forgot which which iPhone it was that. Well, let's see. The 3G and the 3GS didn't have um, flashes, right? I think they, they did. They, the no, original they didn't. didn't. The, the original didn't. didn't, and the 3G no, and the 3GS not. did not either. So it was the 4 that was the first one with the flash. And when the first guy who released a uh, flashlight app for iOS, like previously that had not been allowed by the App Store rules, but he just decided to try and submit it anyway, and it got through. And because it had been so long that anyone had tried to check, like, he just racked up. I think it was 99 cents. He, he, he made, like, $30,000 in a week or Jesus. something like that because everyone downloaded his flashlight app. So anyway, I don't know. That's, it's, this has been a nice, nice launching point into nostalgia. But, Alex, I, I think people are still going to use it. People are not like us, I don't think. I, I see a lot of people, whenever they're in the dark with their cell phones, taking shots with the flash. And I think people are still going to use it equally as much, if not more than, as a torch. And it's good yeah. to have options. It I really mean, is. like it is now. Absolutely. You can choose to use it. or We choose not to use it, but there are those situations where you want to do it for you know compositional reasons. So if you can have the option, why not? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, I forgot to read that email earlier, the one I told you about. you remember? Oh, that one. No, yeah. I have no idea I was, what you mean. I was scrolling through my tabs, and I, I, I found it again. Oh, you found I just, it? I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was funny because it, it starts with, Dear Purchasing Manager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Dear Purchasing Manager, this is Jackie from Sun Rhine Technology in China. The new sell season is or has been coming, but we recommend you our hot selling product and model <laughs> number. SR-108, portable pocket power charger for your reference. Oh. Or, or, other pro- or other portable charger products in our website for your choice. Sincerely yours, Jackie. Oh. Aww. See, that's nice. It's the personal touches. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Uh, dear pers- purchasing manager. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's kind of like addressing a letter to, like, dear hiring manager or dear, you know, like, yeah. this should I'm not be hiring slash madame. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about one more thing. This comes to us from Ryan. By the way, I want to mention, listeners, that we have some really awesome pieces of mail in here that I can't get to on this one because we don't have the right people on the show. Steven and we Taylor, sound like robots. We do also sound horrible, <laughs> so we just have to end, end the show as quickly as possible. But um, we're going to get to your really specific Android questions uh, in in a future episode once we have uh, the proper people here. Uh, and Steven, air conditioning. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> air conditioning. Yeah, we got to get Taylor off the show before he, before he completely expires. Melts. But this is from uh, our friend Ryan Field again. Ryan recently got a Galaxy S4, and uh, he's okay with the plastic build, but he says, I was wondering if there was a solution to the cheap feeling that some loathe. I'm writing you today to say that I've found the solution. On eBay, there are replacement backs for the Galaxy S4 that are made of aluminum. Here is the link, and what I'm doing in the Skype chat right now is dropping that same link to you gentlemen. And uh, I'm clicking on the link right now just so I can see what's going on. And yes, there's a brushed metal battery back cover for the Galaxy S4. And you know what? i got to tell you, it looks pretty good. It looks like the back cover for the Galaxy Note 2, actually. Um, It looks like that kind of same horizontal brushed thing. And it's got some machined holes for the speakerphone down the lower left. And it even has a nice little rim flange around the camera to to brighten that up a little bit. 
and it looks like it comes in different different colors. So that's pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't. I, I, if I had a Galaxy S4, I would probably buy this. I would be a little concerned about how the radio performance would would do, you know, because it's not a phone that was designed for a metal back cover. But if you're willing to to lose a couple dBm, maybe, and feel like you're carrying a metal phone, I think it sounds like a good idea. That's not bad looking. No, yeah, that's maybe. A good thing. I mean, we can if you guys want, we'll drop the uh, we can drop the link in the in the rundown. Yeah, so if, that if you're you can if check you're it out. down for paying with PayPal. I have a vendetta against them, so. It, oh, that's not actually <laughs> metal. Oh. What? Look at the the inside. It's plastic. Oh, it is plastic. Oh, whoa. Well, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's plastic. What is this? Metal-esque. What is this garbage? Hey, Ryan, uh, we don't know what's going on. There might be, well, Hold on. Look at the front, wait, wait, wait. Look at Material. the middle image. Yeah. Features, materials, metal and plastic. Metal and plastic, right. That's what I was just going to say. It's going to be chromed up plastic. I wonder if it's just like this, yeah, like a brushed on or a sprayed on layer of faux. I wonder if this is basically the same airline metallic thing. Yeah. We should get one and find out. Yeah, we should. You know what I love? I like that the Galaxy S4 branding is blurred out on these shots, even though it's very obvious that it's for the Galaxy S4. It's because it's counter. And I remember getting a bunch of, uh, was it, Sony memory stick when Sony had their proprietary memory cards for the Uh the PSP. And I ordered it from some Chinese site, and it comes with this little sticker over, and you peel it off, and it says Sony underneath. I have no faith this is an actual Sony product, but they put a sticker on it, and everything's kosher. Oh, yeah, of course. It's just like putting that round uh, disc sticker over the Apple logo on any laptop on TV. Yes. And you're like, oh, man, I wonder what computer that is. Yeah. The pair sticker. Oh, the pair (laughs) sticker. Yeah, those are nice. (laughs) Well, uh, thank you guys for, for helping me. Ryan, thank you for uh, sending that in. We um, would be very interested to see, uh, to hear from anyone who's bought one of those. We'll drop the link in the rundown, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about those weirdo covers. Maybe never, maybe next time. We just don't know. Alex, thank you also for your uh, question about spotlights and for allowing us to reminisce about the days of dumb phones. As a overnight little bit of a apps. Go ahead, final it. note here, while we're yeah. still talking about uh, alternate cases here, has anyone seen this guy who turned a uh, Galaxy Note 2 into something like a I don't know, 270 gigabyte storage, <laughs> 8,000 milliamp hour handset? No, but he, you need to share that link. <laughs> I will try and pull it up. He basically just put a uh, a huge battery on it, an alternate back, and a uh, micro SD to SD adapter, and bought a thousand dollar two hundred fifty six gigabyte <laughs> SD card. Wow, that is awesome! That guy it's, doesn't need a computer. It is going large. Oh man, please, please, please share that with me because I I think I kind of want to write about that or do something with it. I don't. That no sounds problemo. amazing. Cool. <laughs> Well, cool. Uh, thanks for that interesting note. And, Stephen, thanks for starting off the show talking about what it's like on the news side of the team. I don't think we get your perspective enough, and uh, it'll be great to have you back on the show again soon. Ain't no thing. I'm back anytime you want. Sweet, man. Thank yeah. you. And, Taylor, as usual, I've had a difficult time overcoming uh, you know, the difficulties of you being my co-host, but I think we've survived another one. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> can I just add that uh, I had a transformer, um, one of the first Asus transfer, the first Asus transformer pad, whatever it was then. Yeah. E E pad, E pad transformer, whatever. Get it right. And uh, I had uh, close to three hundred gigabytes on that thing. Wow. Jesus. Wow, oh, yeah. that's heinously crazy. <laughs> so I got to go restore one of my old hard drives. Now that talking about all these like storage capacities, I realize in bubble wrap I have this crashed hard drive from my an old laptop I'm sitting in my closet. So I got to take that to like a data recovery place because now I want to see all my old pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah, bring your wallet with you. I know, I know. Oh, it's sad. Okay. Anyway, while I go do that, while Stephen goes and reports on the news, and while Taylor tries to cool off in some coffee shop somewhere, I'm going to call it an end to episode 052, our one-year anniversary episode of the weekly. Congratulations to us. 052 is coming to a close. You must find us on Twitter. Stephen is at Stephen Schenk, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-C-H-E-N-C-K. Taylor is at Casper Tech. And even though Stephen doesn't talk very often on Twitter, stay tuned for more news on where you can reach Stephen and all of the rest of us in a different venue. 
One might even say a forum. More news on that next week. Hmm. Yes. But also follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, as Pocket Now on Facebook and Google Plus. Leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music, because that helps us out and we like it. And if you have a topic, question, or suggestion for the podcast, or you just want to hear your name read on the air, like those two lucky gentlemen before, email us podcast at pocketnow.com. Sincerely, thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I'm going to switch over. I feel like I'm, I'm hearing the bandwidth change on Taylor's end. Taylor, talk for a second. Hello. I muted myself. Oh, you muted yourself. Oh, well, that, that explains the, the bump in quality. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that was exciting. What was that? Uh, that was the boat passing by in the grass. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. <laughs>